All right, man, I'm back. Finally getting back in the lab. I got my big brother with me. Where my glasses at? Man, I've been doing old man shit all day long. I don't know. I hope I ain't got roaches, but I just seen a bull. <laughs> yeah, normally you hope you ain't got them motherfuckers when you get them. I hate them damn things. Yeah, I ain't seen no roaches. Either, but I just seen a bull. I couldn't identify. That sucker was moving fast. I was like, I don't know about these 2024 roaches. We gonna see. I'm gonna let a bar. I got two bones. I'm gonna let off just on the string. So um, I don't know what page it's gonna be on, but like, share, subscribe. It's probably gonna go on best day of my life, man, because I gotta get back in the motion on them. So I'm sitting, I got my brother, he about to ask me some questions. Uh, we're gonna converse. Uh, and then I'm gonna go pay some bills. Yeah, I heard that. Mm -hmm. right, let me know you ready, bro. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. So you did ten years, right? That's that's that that's the truth. So you've been out now for what? Is it sixteen? Is it sixteen years? I've been out since November twenty six, two thousand six. Okay, How long so, ago was it? Ooh, that's okay. almost twenty, about eighteen years. Almost ten years. So I've been home for a long time. Describe the last eighteen years, um, from the time you got out. Like, what was your <laughs> mindset? Like, far as I know you didn't want to go back, but show me the pl the plans that you put in place to make sure okay. that you you want you want to come in, you want to going back. Okay, that's a, that's a loaded question. That's a four hour <laughs> question right there. For real, for real. Yo, yeah. when it got one, I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible and not talk nobody head off. But when I first came home, bro, I didn't know what was going on. I had never gotten out of prison before. Mm -hmm. Uh, all I know is I want to be a part of my child life. Dayana, who is 27 now, she was nine then. Mm -hmm. And so primarily my goal was to just be in her life. So I structured my job life so that I could, I'm gonna keep it all the way funky. I did what I had to do in order to be able to pick her up in mm -hmm. the morning. That mean leave my house, go to the hemp where they was living at. Right. Then take her to Tony Elementary School. Mm. Then I do what I do during the day. And then when school is out, I go pick up. Right. So from her last year at Tony Elementary School to all three years at Columbia Middle School to all three years at Columbia High School, even till we went to college, I drove her to college. I bought the refrigerator that I got in my bedroom is the refrigerator that I paid for to go in her college dorm. Okay. So, uh, my goal was I. You can't make up ten years, nine years. You can't do that. Right. But you got to put in those man hours. So mm -hmm. I just was strategic. I was like, if I'm gonna have a, a place in my child life, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to figure out a way where I can talk to. Her. I was like, so what better time? I was like, I'm gonna be the the last person she talked to before she go in that school. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna be the first person she talked to when she get out. So mm -hmm. that means I can give her a pep talk when she going in. And then when she come out, I can ask her, what did you learn? So we can try to, we can try to get it. I do the same thing to some of them. Right. And, uh, but I just want you, cause sometimes we go to school and the teacher give you something, yeah, back to the teacher, but you never really, it never really makes sense. So I just be trying to get it to soak in. So. With my daughters, I've always done that. Um, to further answer your question, I think that I was, I'm still getting to know myself. Right. I'm still getting to, even at 18 years later, like that trauma. I had trauma before I went to prison. Mm -hmm. So coming home just added more trauma to it. But I am making way because now at 47, I'm, it may sound weird, but I'm finally coming into my own. I'm I'm finally figuring out what take money out of the situation. Don't even don't even think about the money. What what do you want to add to this place? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? What would you get up and do for free? Gotcha. And mm -hmm. I'm gotcha. finally getting into a place where I can do I don't want to have a conversation about money. I don't want that to be the mm -hmm. the only, but it's an issue because we got bills. Oh, that's course. that's the plantation that we live on. So um but at the time, I was just like, I knew what I wanted to do then, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the skill set. I didn't have the relationships. And just like a lot of things, you got to go and stumble and do it. It's like a successful relationship. Mm -hmm. 
you want your first relationship to be successful, but it helps if you go bump your head a few times. A few times, yeah. Yeah, like you got to go through your whole phase in order to understand. <laughs> what let, let, let me interject real quick. Uh -huh. All right. Because Dayana was born while you was. I was in the county jail. You was in the county jail. Yep. Um, I, I looked at your page. You, you got a picture of hold, you were holding her. Yep. Like, being a father of daughters. Mm hmm. Like, we know how the world is. Facts. So, like, not being able to see her, like, consistently for that long, do you feel guilty for that now? Or did you feel guilty then? Or you see what I'm saying? Like, that's a really how did you feel about it then and how do you feel about it now? This, here's the thing. That's, damn, that's a good question, bro. Uh, I carried guilt for a long time. Mm -hmm. I really did. But that guilt caused me to... My child had a BMW at the age of 16. Mm. Now, my uncle Emery gave it to me. I had right. to pay him, but he didn't charge me for a price for it. Right. But this child had a BMW at 16. I used to go buy all kinds of clothes. I had went one day for her birthday and just went and got tons and tons mm. of polo. And and she just was not phased. And But mm. what I learned was is that you can't buy you can't buy it. You mm -hmm. got to put the man out. So the guilt caused me to do these things, but guilt also caused me to call her grandfather and be like, man, hey, man, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and her grandfather is a preacher. Mm -hmm. I used to call him so much, bro. He stopped answering the phone. <laughs> I ain't joking. Because I, yeah. well, I used to call my uncle Emory. People whose fatherhood tactics... Mm -hmm. I agree with. I would call him and ask him questions. Right. And I had brothers like, "Hey man, you just got." It. So to answer your question, like I, I the guilt was on me hard because in, this is my child. If I'm just like a, a, a deadbeat dad, then it really don't matter because right. it's just like, I ain't. Right. But I'm just like, nah, nigga, this is my child. This shit bar. It bothered me to the point where when I did have guilt on my heart, it forced me to get focused while I was in prison. I was like, let me learn as much as I possibly right. can. So then when I do come home, I am in here. Ain't nothing I can do about this shit now. Right. I'm here and I got to make the best of the situation. So the best thing for me to do is to consume as much knowledge and understanding so I can reduce the probability of me going back to this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and gotcha. I had that guilt on me for a long time and then we had some breakdowns, bro. We had mm -hmm. some real breakdowns. I remember I had bought her a car and she was in 12th grade. And I bought it from her grandma, Sabrina. Mm -hmm. And I said, listen, it's your car. It's paid for. Only thing I need for you to do is put these moonwalk signs on the side of it. Mm -hmm. Not thinking that a 19-year-old. Hey, she ain't trying to do that. But I'm like, yeah. it's a new, it's, it's a, a car. It's you a good car. to go. Yeah. And this ain't no raggedy car. Like, this is yeah. a good car. I was like, but... I mean, I got to pay for the insurance and shit, so I can put the signs on your car and you'll be good. And she was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, I done rolled by that one day. <laughs> and she ain't had no signs on the car. <laughs> and then I, I like, I said, don't respond now. I said, go pick the moon. It was the 5th of July. Right. I remember this because when I got down the street to go pick the moon, walk up, the bottom lit out of the sky. It just started. Mm -hmm. It just made it worse because I'm pissed off. When I get, I call her. I say, you got them signs on your car? She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn, I'm pissed off now. I'm hot. So not even taking into consideration that my child in high school, right? she is 19. She is doing her thing. She don't want to be having no moonwalk signs moonwalk on her. Right. But this is how I'm paying for this shit. Moonwalk paid for this right. shit. But uh, so I went and. I took the tag off the car and I gave her the title to the car. I called Geico. I took my insurance off. Uh, I gave her her title. I said, can I get my moonwalk signs out your car? Cause they ain't on the outside where they supposed to be. When I tell you, she, my child cussed me out. Oh yeah, I did that anyway. I did. Yeah, oh, we cussed at each other. I was talking about on some, I was like, damn, she a beast. I was <laughs> Uh, um, <laughs> we fell out. That thing hurt me so bad. Mm. But I knew that if I didn't draw the line, it was just gonna continue yeah, to get weird. Right. So, but here's the thing with that young. Oh, uh, she is my child, but she's stronger and she's smarter than me. That mm. nigga went a 
got her own insurance. Or maybe she got on her mama. She might she got on her mama insurance mm -hmm. until she got her own insurance. But since then, I never had to say anything to her about a car, about her insurance, the way that she pay her bills is all structured, right. structured a certain kind of way. Now, uh, it hurt me, but then we weren't even speaking. And then Mr. Ram, bro, we ran into each other at the Crow on Memorial Drive. I ain't gonna never forget it. Bro, I sent that at the grocery store and I just hugged up on it, bro. We just started crying mm. in the middle of the frozen food aisle. And I was like, man, I'm sorry. She was like, man, I'm sorry. I, said, I don't think we never had a falling out like that. Right. Uh, but um, from the guilt aspect, in order to to breathe, in order to be alive, you got to forgive yourself. Because mm. you can be wrong for something, and you can try to do everything in your power from this forward on, this moment on, but you can't go back and fix nothing, bro. Right. You can't buy it. You mm. can't. You can't. Uh, persuade somebody that it didn't happen. Oh no, that's not how it was. Mm -hmm. You can't do that, bro. Mm -hmm. You have to, hey, I am wrong. I apologize. Whatever the punishment is, I am, I will take it. I ain't gonna hold my hands up like right. that, cause you know what I mean? Holding hands up like that here with the bullshit, like the right. man that was on the uh, the little apartment thing. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, I put the work in. I put the work in, but her stability, her determination, her discipline, it helps me. Because yeah. mm. I see her and just be like, oh man, so, so. but they keep me out the nonsense. And again, to just answer your question, I did have an awesome amount of guilt on me. Right. But I was just like, how do you move forward? You can't move forward if you're just living in guilt. So, hey man, I'm sorry. I, but when she forgave me, then when she started seeing it, when she came to me one day, she was just like, man, I remember when people used to say this about you. They used to say that. She said, but this what you was trying to do the whole time. Mm -hmm. I was just like, yeah. They always say it when they get older. Oh, they say it when they, when they get older, they be like, wait a minute. I be like, hey, yeah. a win is a win. I'll mm -hmm. take it then. She was like, when she told my child, told me she was proud of me. Oh, man, that thing broke me down. That oh, thing yeah. hit me in the back of the throat. I was like, oh, yeah. that's all. Everything else, bro, I don't give up. I don't care nothing about it. Long as some of the young and at this point, King Salem, mm -hmm. long, long as they understand I got their best interest at heart, and if I can get it, they got it. I don't really care about nothing else. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm still, I always be trying to save the world, but at the end of the day, those three is the ones that really, it really matter. So, so with that being said, when Summer was born, mm -hmm. did you see that as a chance, like, to make up? I cut the cord. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was okay. there. I'm talking about there, like me. See, and our relate. You know, because you're a father right. of daughters. Our relation, the relationship that you have with your daughter, it's all different because they're all, different they're personalities. Different. Yeah. Me and Summer is like, it's weird because like, I had Summer as a baby, mm -hmm. like as a single parent, like, living in this apartment, I was like, shit, I'm on daddy, though. We gonna have to thug this shit out. Yeah. Like, we figuring out. I'm talking about, I done had a day where I was looking in the back seat. I done put the damn seat in wrong. <laughs> she got, I'm like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Squeeze. Oh, my she on, God. She on hydraulics in the back. Oh, room. my God. <laughs> then you got to learn how to put these goddamn seats in. This yeah. child going to bump her head. But, uh. Our relationship is different because I'm there. And Summer is just 10. She is at the age that Dayana was at when we first began to interact. So it's just, it's a different environment. But to answer your question, yeah, it does. But I make sure that, because see now, Dayana is an adult now. Mm -hmm. So our conversations are a way different. They way yeah. different. Mm -hmm. And I'm not in all of our conversations as a leader. Sometimes I come in our conversations as a follower, as a learner, mm -hmm. as somebody that's trying to pick up what you're putting down. Right. But some of got Dayana in her. She got me in her. She got her mom in her. She got, like, like some of a, a whole nother beast because Dayana spoils someone. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she, and then she, we just get to the age. I tried it. I was like, you don't want to go to y'all football game. She ain't even at that age yet. Right. So we still got to embark on it. But she a, she a totally, she still, did. all my daughters tell me what to do. But I don't have a problem with that because I'm like. That's pretty much what they do, bro. They I think they, that they smarter than they us, bro. They no time so. I, I think they Even smart. if they ain't, they think they is. Hey, man. I know my, yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm. 
you 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 tell yourself that oh, they ain't gonna get me this time. Man, shit. They get me to with. they get me to this day. I'm talking about it be then I'll be like, you ain't gonna make a spectacle of me in public. Yeah. It don't even matter. Yeah, right. But like okay. you be mad at yourself because you be like, I ain't gonna fall for it this yeah. time. Then you know, you fall for it. Dad do some old shit like, Daddy, can you do that? I'm like, okay. Whatever it is. Yeah. What you want me to shoot a nigga? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> pretty much to that extent. But I uh, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. Oh yeah. I would love to have a boy, but at this point, I'm all girled out, my nigga. Yeah, pretty much. Me and you both. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna um, we're gonna take a detour here. Okay. Because um, I see a lot of your videos, mm -hmm. and you talk about prison reform. Okay. Um, now, I saw one video you did where you talked about just the billion-dollar industry the prison is. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, what is your hope level of prison reform in the United States? Seeing, that, it's, seeing that it is a, a billion-dollar industry, what is your... You, you, you asking essay-type questions. <laughs> We filling our time on the thesis. God damn. We're doing a thesis, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to, we, I got 15 minutes and I got to get up out of here. I got you. Damn, boy. That's a, hey, man. That's a, I want to, right, I'm going to answer the question. Okay. I'm going to answer the question. I just like, yo, get a question. Be like, I want to answer this question so bad. But, uh, so, prison reform or recidivism or mm -hmm. just the, oh, man, right now. In the state of Georgia, not anywhere else, mm -hmm. there have been as of it's August now, as of June, July, of July, July, the Georgia Correctional Facilities mm -hmm. or Institution or GCI, however they said, uh, have lost a hundred and fifty people by way of stabbings and or unsolved mm. uh, homicides right. uh, or suicides. Okay. The recidivism rate, which is the rate at which individuals return back to prison is the highest that it's ever been. The rate at which African-American males are going to prison without a high school diploma or and or GED has increased and continues to increase every year mm. for the last few decades. They are building more prisons. They are taking more money away from educational mm -hmm. facilities. We have what we call the school to prison pipeline mm -hmm. and it is working like a mm -hmm. well or machine but I even if I'm going to fight and it's going to be a fight that I'm going to lose I'm going to fight and I'm going to mm -hmm. fight to the death I'm going to be on some glad daddy shit like the we the 300 nigga. I ain't, <laughs> I'm not, I ain't. so if I I can look at the big numbers and I can look at the condition of the prisons and I can see that we as a as a race, as a species, that we losing. But if I go into a classroom, I had a chess program and I seen mm -hmm. a kid who was a clearly was an asshole. <laughs> so by the time we got done, got done with class, it. Right. this dude said, Man, you know what? You can't move this piece, you gotta move that piece, such, 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 such. And I heard that light come on, mm -hmm. I had to step out. Cause I was like, man, I cried. I ain't cry. I was right. like, I held it, but I was like, as long as I can have that, I don't know what that number might turn into. Right. But what I got to do is I got to do whatever my part is, so that I can try to be okay for whenever I get to where my ancestors are. But to minutely answer your question, bro, the system is working the way that it's supposed to right. work. The I want to read something to you. Mm -hmm. Companies that benefit from prison labor. Mm -hmm. McDonald's, Walmart, wow, wow, Avis, wow. Starbucks, what? Verizon, Wendy's, wow. JC Penney when came in, they about gone now, but Sprint. Wow. I don't know how I don't know how the, the companies that use prison labor, Victoria's Secret. Wow. And so we talking about like <laughs> billion dollar companies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so when we talk about prison reform. Talk about money. Yeah, we talking about money. Big money. And 
And you know, I, I think you said something also that prison just replaced slave plantations. That's all they did. And so now I'm gonna segue into another. Okay. Let me let me conclude to yeah, to please end do. please do. To end prison to improve prison reform is to uh, is to delete slavery. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what it is. And slavery didn't end, it just transitions. And in some parts of Marietta right. it's still yeah. a big feel. And now this is I'm this I'm going this is kinda like a I'm gonna say a statement and then I'm gonna give you a question. Okay. When it comes to politics <laughs> He's been pissed on his siblings off right now. I know when it comes to politics, <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm being real. There was a certain party that uh, wrote a crime bill. Oh, yeah. That led to the incarceration. Oh, my. Of, the mass incarceration. Mass incarceration. Oh, my God. Um, of several, of, several really? men that look like. Really? This. Both of them? Both of them. Both yeah. of them. Biden, Biden. I know you didn't say no names, right. but. Biden and Kamala are responsible for a yeah. large population of... Now, let, let, yeah, let, let, let me ask you now, because me personally... Um, I'm assuming this to Eleanor. So I'm me me personally, <laughs> when people say you got to go vote, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a party thing because mm -hmm. I think both sides benefit. Both, you know, you got some of them companies are conservative, some of them companies are liberal, mm -hmm. but I think it's a system thing. Mm -hmm. That's a system thing. Period. Like it, no matter who and who you know, no matter who's the president or mm -hmm. who runs the White House, mm -hmm. that's a system thing. So I, I think as black men, I don't think either party benefits us because we're victims of the system that has been installed, and nobody's trying to really tackle that system. Mm -mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -mm. And so, me personally, I believe, and I'm gonna ask you, do you? How can us as black men mm -hmm. fix it because I like I like the title, "Stay Out of Prison." Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's a there's a there's a foundation called the Freedom the Freedom I think you say the Freedom Project mm -hmm. Freedom Foundation, mm -hmm. and what they do they go and get help men get out of prison who have been wrongfully convicted. Okay, I think they said over fifty percent of their uh, it's crazy of their um the guys they get out are black. It's crazy, and so and they've done a bunch of time too. Right, and yeah. it's like imagine being in prison forty years for something you didn't do. 30 years, something you didn't do. But I died. How many yeah. people did so die? My question is, what can we as a community of black men do to make sure that we're not being collateral damage? You know what? That's a good question. These these are not 30 minute segment questions. <laughs> these, no, I'm so serious, yeah. bro. These questions that you can break these questions down oh, yeah. for a week and they it could be a topic of the week. I'm glad you came because I like to take these same questions and make them our first five discussions yeah. for whatever page that we on. Cause then we can get deep over to it. A lot of times we talk at stuff, but we don't really dive into yeah, it. Into it. So this is just my approach and this is just my perception and my perception is always evolving because I'm always learning and I'm always picking certain things up. So how I felt yesterday may not be how I feel tomorrow, which is like, Yesterday, bitch, we was going together. Tomorrow, we're going to be <laughs> like that be. So, when it comes down to politics, this is just my opinion right now. Yesterday was different. Tomorrow may be different. But today, this is how I feel. I feel like there's a government that we see. There's a government that we feel. We earnestly, we in our American-blooded breathing, we feel like we have an effect on this government. We feel right. like we got a word. We feel like we in charge. We feel like we can put people in power and them people are going to send us and give us everything we want. Side note, that shit has never happened. <laughs> never in the history. It's, it's been like, forever. you have told me about Santa Claus and Santa Claus has never came. Why am I sending out the cookies mm -hmm. in the milk? Okay, now, so then there's that. Then there's this, I love black people. Mm -hmm. Was it you can look like us or say you look or I send you dance at a black barbecue and be like, 
and you mess around and put a, a fraternity or a sorority behind it and do anything black. If you break out hot sauce or barbecue sauce or some watermelon juice, yeah. come from your, whatever, yeah. whatever it is that niggas yeah. do, I'm like, oh man, yeah. I wanna get behind. I don't even care, I wanna get behind it so bad. And the weird part is that we have had a black Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. And that nigga didn't show up neither. Bag of bricks. <laughs> that shit was a bag of bricks, man. man. So what I'm saying is, it's just like, oh, uh, I. This is just my personal opinion. I think that in order to control the masses, and I just learned this through naturalistic observation and listening and paying attention and trial and error, and it could change. In order to control the masses, the masses must feel like they are in control. Mm -hmm. And so within that... So you said the illusion of inclusion. It, it? That's all it is, <laughs> yeah. man. And it was it was weird to me because an old dude, an old white dude said it to me. He was just like... But then he showed me in way of... We flew out to San Diego. I, used, I was working up under this grant with Morehouse and uh, a whole bunch of other people. It was a $2 million grant. But then once a year, they would fly us to San Diego and... We would have these workshops. Right. And I thought we had gang issues in Clayton County because I worked in the red zone. Right. But Arkansas and uh, Compton, they got gang problems. They got gang. We yeah. got gang members. I ain't know Arkansas was that bad, bro. bro it's <laughs> not gang. In Texas mm -hmm. and all these other places. So. When we go to these places, they tell us about how they deal with gangs. And I'm just like, oh, man, that's crazy that y'all. But this older white guy taught me, taught me a strategy that helps you help people decide on the decision that you've already decided for them. And what that means is just like, I already have these three options for you. And I'm going to tell you, boop, 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 boop. And I'm going to put a whole bunch of who raw behind one two and three mm -hmm. and i'm gonna put all the stress on you because now you got to choose mm -hmm. where you got to go the thing is is that i already have a skill set and a plan set for all three of these and i put these three in place but how i get you to buy in is you got to decide mm -hmm. so when you decide what your plan is all your plans come up to you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be a business owner, right. or you just want to make money. That's where all that shit is the same. same thing. It's all the same. First thing you got to do is get you some ID. Second thing you got to do is you got to pass this drug test because mm -hmm. I can't give you no more to call it if you don't do this. Mm -hmm. and such. So it all equals the same thing. Only thing I've done is put the ball in your corner, and now, as opposed to me telling you what to do, you have the class plan, and I'm helping you get done the shit that I already decided that you was going to do. Right. Yeah, it's my game. Yeah. That's all well, it, it is, is bro. Yeah. And when you don't have that control over the masses, you'll get these independent sectors and these motherfuckers, militias will start coming out and it'll get shit and they'll do stuff like, I don't know, what, like, uh, uh, try to take over the capital yeah. or shit like that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll start doing all types of shit. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's slick important to have what appears to be the government, but again, this is just naturalistic observation. I think that there's a government in place that we don't see. I think that there's uh, 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 positions of power that we don't have access to. Because let's check this out. Let's say this is a pretty decent neighborhood. Let's say you own half the neighborhood mm -hmm. and I own half. We don't live in this moment, but you own half of it, I own half of it. Mm. My question is, what can the HOA say to us? Like, for real, for real. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you have your rules and your standards, but what I'm telling you is that I own the block. I own, I own, I own yeah, yeah, I own, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so I, yeah. You, now, for just so we can, so you'll have uh, power, I, you can come up with all this shit right here. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's cool, and that's cute, and that's for these people over here to follow. That ain't for me. At the end of the day, bitch, yeah. I own this block. <laughs> yeah. My brother own the other half. Yeah. At the end of the day, we'll make this bitch a big ass basketball court. Yeah. You got them keep you talking to me. Right. You see what I'm saying? So look at where the money at, look at where the control is. Do you think that that the people who really got control is on the front line 
getting their ear shot off? Bro, that's that's a conversation for a whole other time. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, hey, like we, damn, you talking about a yeah. week, but that's a, yeah, that's yeah, a, that's a, it, that's, so, that could be a minute series. Yeah, yeah, it is. Cause, yeah. cause what I'm saying, and it, again, it's just my opinion, and it can change, but yeah. bro, we don't. Even if we, let's just say we did choose, bro, because of the electoral college, which is set up so that we don't even, when we go vote, we don't even vote for the person that we see. We vote, vote for somebody that might, that might vote, vote for them. Yeah. That's what electoral they, they, college is. They can change their mind if they want to. Well, everybody said this, but I'm, 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 I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And which, it has which is why they thought the last election was stolen. So, so but that's a... So, and my, so... When, look, check me out. When I go vote, because I'm going to go vote. Every time I get an opportunity, this is what I also want to say. Just because you're a convicted felon, don't mean you can't vote. That's some bullshit. I voted for the, all the let Since I've been home, no, since Obama, because I went down there and voted for Obama, oh, you would have thought that I met the real Martin Luther King. Because they was down there when I went. I was in the city of Decatur. Mm. Nigga, Chick-fil-A brought chicken down here. It was white people. I was, I'm in the line, bro. I'm crying. I'm in the line. I was like, man, I'm, boy, I'm about, this about to be a change. No, bro, I'm bro. in the line with old black people. They got old white Dude, people. I like, called off work the next day. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I called off work the next day. Eight years later, I was like, this nigga. It bricks. Bricks. Bag of bricks, bro. Bag of goddamn uh, bricks. So after that, I was just like, damn, I voted for Trump out of spite. <laughs> like, you know no, what? I voted for Trump, but I didn't. I didn't like Hillary. I didn't like. I did not like Hillary Clinton. I don't like Hillary. I didn't like I, Hillary Clinton. Bro. So, so, like, so now, so now we got an election, and I know you're not supposed to tell who you're gonna. But I'm gonna do this. I'm writing in everybody because yeah. last time I went to vote, I did vote for Trump, but I put I did it as. The Secretary of State. What the hell, man? Yeah, right me. I wrote my little brother, I wrote my little brother in. I put Young Tro Young Dro as the treasurer. Right but man, I'm man. gonna have my glasses on. I got my what's called glasses. I go. I'm gonna let y'all see who I vote for. And it might be Trump. It might be Kamala. Or it might be Andre Three Thousand. It just depends on how the fuck I'm feeling when I get in there. But I'm gonna get my sticker and I'm gonna exercise my right to vote. So. Oh, that's a that's a I, I need if you wrote that down I need yeah. you to send them questions to me bro because we could just really just make them yeah that's gonna yeah we can talk, the, man, we can talk the, all day, then we can go do our research on certain yeah. things and but we can break it down look man like share subscribe this is gonna go on best day of my life tomorrow's not promise go on do your little damn while they still playing your song um yeah that's it.